Uh, those who are gifted with the life's voice, please uh, join, right? Uh, <coughs> born, married to a Buddhist it looks like, and he asked me, did you totally give up on Buddhism? I told him, Jesus is a living God. I have accepted him into my heart. So you have received a total transformation. You got it. I like Buddha, probably the greatest teacher, but he said about God, it is beyond my reach. It is beyond my reach. What does it mean? I can reach you. And even Shiloh is able to sing so loud, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he saw his dad's miracle and so many other miracles. He himself is a miracle. Praise God. So our God is a living God and a loving God. Because he's a living God and a li loving God, he ought to be a liberating God. That's why we believe what God can do. Because he lives, we can face tomorrow. Jesus. Praise God. Amen. Jesus, he lives. On the wall, he lives. Yes, Amen. on the wall. In my heart, he lives. In your heart, he lives. 
Amen. Isn't that amazing? That's good. He lives. <laughs> That's good. You know, I can give you story after story. A Hindu who now is a follower of Christ, uh, he used to fly from Providence to New York on an airplane. He got me the best job in um, Boston. $80,000 was a lot of money in those days. I was telling one day at Bryan College when I was a student at that time, studying my MBA. We were talking all in, um, Japanese people, Chinese, Indians, and, uh, and, and I was talking among all the Americans and so on. Yeah, we were, I don't know, somehow they entered into a talk about God. You know, in a business college, somebody mentioned it. I said, Ashok, all that matters is this. Christ said this, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness. Ashok said, but will have the light of life. I said, where did you know this? Look over there on the wall. <laughs> there was a campus ministry or something. They put that scripture over there. Today, he is a saved young man. He thought he was going for an operation. And we all prayed here. And he opened his heart to Christ on the phone, on the phone. And he emphasized it when we all went together as Indians in our home uh, six months ago or five months ago. Paul, that prayer really worked. And Jesus is a living God. Amen. That's why because he lives, we can believe God for miracles. And it will, they will happen to glorify God. Not to glorify or brag about it, but to lift up his name. Thank you, Jesus. All right, what is the next one? 435. 435. 435. Amen. What a friend we have in Jesus. Sometimes that's a praise you pay. When this song was created, you composed, the father and mother lost all their children. They were, all, they, they were going to get married. And you know, the boat was sunk and all that. A lot of stories behind that. But God gave that song, what a friend we have in Jesus. Take it to the Lord in prayer. I think it was a husband and his wife died. Yes, Joseph Scriven. <laughs> Christianity, Christ, 
He didn't come to create a religion, establish one. He came to salva give salvation, peace, healing, deliverance, and eternal life forever. Amen. That's why when Joseph Scriven, he was going to get married to his beautiful bride, and the bride went with her friends, and uh, the bride died in the disaster. <coughs> the bride was now waiting. What a troubled time it was. Such a distress. Like Esther would call such a distress. But they had always agreed, you know, take it to the Lord and pray. And that is the, you know, they have gone, both are in heaven united. God gave other children, and so on and so forth. It's a beautiful story. But all that he wrote, it came from the passion he had in his heart. Take it to the Lord in prayer. So anything you have as a burden, and when you leave it to God, God will take care of it. And we have seen it many times. Praise God. Next one. 505. 505. Now lift at me. Amen. Now lift at me. It is the love of God that lifts us up, condemned to sinners like we are. And yet, the Lord has been merciful to us to save us. Hallelujah. God will take care of you no matter what. Amen. Lord. No matter what fails. Sometimes medicine may fail. I myself, an example, three and a half years, I took a medicine for the stomach, intestinal amoeba since I had ultimately the Lord took care of it. God will take care of it.
Praise the Lord. No matter what the scenario you may have, either for you or for your family or for any other situation you may be in. You know, uh, we are facing a situation in India. If the present leader gets elected, already in Northeast India, 300 churches have been burnt, destroyed. And the people are all worshipping on the roadside in the forest. And it's spreading all over the country, incited by the present Prime Minister. God loves him. We need to pray for him, that God will open his eyes and save him. Whoever is the next leader or the same leader, doesn't matter. God can change. Sometimes God appoints certain bad, bad leaders too, so that people will repent and come to terms with God. So pray for India this whole week, election time then, later on, you know. And thank God they elected a wonderful man of God in Liberia. <laughs> That's a miracle. We prayed for Liberia for the results. And that belongs to Brother Cephas' church, the Prime Minister. Can you believe that? God can do wonders. What God is able to. So when we put all of our burdens on his chest, what happens? We can be at ease and enjoy the rest because the Lord will take care of us. All right? So let just close your eyes and look to God. Anything that you, you have in your heart, in your mind, just put, put it at the feet of Jesus and lean on his chest, knowing that God will take care of us. Just thank him. In the way he has taken care of you in the past, just look to him. He is our heavenly priest. He is touched by our infirmities, our weaknesses, our foibles, whatever they are. Just touch his feet and rest on his chest. Just tell him. Just thank him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your name. Lord, you have taken all our burdens, O God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Blessed be your name. With the Cephas, would you like to offer a word of prayer? Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We bless you with me. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we just say thank you. Yes. Yes, Lord. Yes. No matter what we do, we know when we give it to you, Lord. Yes, Lord. You will take care. Of yes. Us, Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for waking up us this morning. Yes, Jesus. We thank you for the breath that we continue to use. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for the sight that we continue to have, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Right. Lord. We thank you for the blood that continues to flow down to our, our veins. Yes, Lord. Lord. Yes, Lord. Lord. That allow us to walk. Yes, Lord. There are some who want to walk this morning, Lord, but they just can't walk. Yes, Lord. There are some who want to talk this morning, but they just can't talk. Yes, Lord. But we just say thank you because of your grace yes, and your mercy. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We ask you, Lord, to go to the Middle East, Heavenly Father. Yes, Lord. Yes. Thank you for defending and protecting Israel yesterday, yes. Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Over 500 drones and missiles were sent to them, Lord, but you protected your people, Lord. Yes, we say thank you. We say guide them, Heavenly Father, yes. for all that's going on over there, Lord. Yes, Touch Lord. them because yes. you are God and you are still in control. Yes, Lord. We present this country to you. Yes, Lord. Guide this country, Lord. Yes, Lord. People from all walks of life are coming into this country. Lord, they are coming here because in your world you say people will leave from one era to another era, coming to the end of time Thank and you. looking for a better life. Yes, Lord. So we just present it to you. We present Mother Liberia to you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you for what is going on there, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We present Heavenly Father India to you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Be with the James children home this morning, Lord. Yes, yes Lord. Continue to touch them, continue to guide those that are there protecting them, Lord. Yes, yes Lord. Have mercy, Lord. Yes, Lord. It is because of your grace. Be with Pastor yes, Lord. Justin, Heavenly Father. Yes, Lord. In Liberia. Yes, Lord. The church that will continue to assist through outreach. Continue to guide them, Lord. Continue to use them as to continue to bring more.
people to know you well. Now we come home, Lord. We present our pastor and his work to you, Lord. We ask for good health, long life, Heavenly Father. Continue to strengthen the pastor, Heavenly Father, that he will continue to carry up your word. Be with each and every one of us. Those that are sick, Marie, Heavenly Father, Mama, Heavenly Father, Bill, Heavenly Father, and all those on our prayer list. Yes, Lord. Those that are not on our prayer list yet, Lord, like Peter and others who say, Lord, touch them. Yes, Lord. Your hand is not shut that it cannot reach to anyone, Heavenly Father, that you can touch. Go in the hospital this morning, Lord. Be with those that are on a bed of reflection, Heavenly Father. Let them know you are God and you are God all by yourself. Have my seal also. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We just ask you, Lord, for strength. Yes, Jesus. Thank you for your mercy. Yes. Thank you for your love. Amen. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for life itself. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that we can call your name. Even though we are not wanted to call upon your name, for if we don't call upon your name, Lord, who name shall we call? Yes. So we just say thank you. Thank you, Lord, that when we go astray and when we come back to you, you receive our open arms. We say thank you, Lord. Have mercy on us. Yes, Jesus. Guide us. Lead us. Protect us. Lord, you are loving God. Without you, we can do nothing. We praise you, Lord. You are the Alpha and the Omega. You are the yesterday, today, and forever. Oh, Heavenly Father, have mercy on us. We pray, Heavenly Father, that your message that you have given your child, Heavenly Father, to bring to your flocks today will not fall on deaf ear. Someone will be healed from that message. Yes, Lord. Someone who is sick, Heavenly Father, will grip, Heavenly Father. Someone who is on the, the, the fence, Heavenly Father, will come down from that fence. Those that have, that have yes, stomach ache this morning, Lord, after that message, it will be gone. Yes, Those that have problems in the heat, the knees, the feet, Heavenly Father, they will feel better, Heavenly Father. Yes, yes Lord. Just guide us. We will travel his wife wherever they are, Lord. We say, carry them safe yes, and bring Lord. them back safely. Yes, Jesus. We will be children that are here, Lord. Thank continue you. to pro protect them, Lord. Yes, Lord. Continue to guide them. Continue to lead them. Because you're God of all gods. Yes. You're doctors Jesus. among all doctors. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. But, well, Lord, you say you will never leave. Or forsake us. You will be with us all the time. Yes. Be with those that did not come today, no matter what was the cause, but we know they are here with their hearts through the Spirit. For oh Lord, not our will. Let your will be done in Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. Our God is an awesome God. He, when you call upon him in a dangerous situation that you are facing, he can always answer and uh, he can reverse the situation ever that you are in. And you can have a mighty comeback and turn things around. Years ago, I used to teach at Bryan University. There was a topic by name, turnaround management. Just turning around. Xerox owner did it. Herb Kalagar Southwest did it. Now they are doing not doing good. McDonald did it. Coca Cola did it. So many others did it. But unfortunately, in the Christian circles, we don't see much of this turnaround that God can bring. Although you see that in the book of Esther, that God is not mentioned in the book, but you see the omniscience of God right from the beginning. God's knowledge of what was going on. And he could see also the omnipresence of God in the middle of the book. Until then, we covered that. Today, we are going to see the grand finale of all that God intended to do, demonstrating the omnipotence of God. God is all-powerful. No one can exceed beyond his capabilities. God is the only person who 
can he compare to himself? Whom can he compare our living God to nobody? That's why with God, everything is possible. Turn to the ninth chapter of the book of Esther. We cover up to seven chapters in the last Sunday. We covered that Esther was able to be the queen and she was a mere nobody in a foreign country in Persia. They were all taken as captives out of Jerusalem and her uncle Mordecai was taken as a captive. He probably was born there because his grandfather, great grandfather, Mr. Kish was the one who was taken over. So many people had their children born, grandchildren born in a foreign country. Kind of enslaver, enslavement in another foreign rule like Joseph in Egypt and so many others. God delivered them from Egypt. Now his intention was to deliver them from total annihilation. What is my total annihilation? Total destruction. The Messiah could not have come if what happened in this book hasn't happened. The line of David, the Messiah was supposed to come because King Jeconiah goofed. Now another line took over, the line of the Messiah. So that is where we are here. The God's omniscience, all-knowing. He can see through things that you and I cannot see. God knew that a boy born in a jungle, deaf in my right ear, could be here today. <laughs> God knew this. Healed of many, many illnesses. The doctors sometimes couldn't do that, but God took care of it. God was able to do that. God is a living God. Now we saw that King Agasuras ruled for 20 years as from 486 BC to 465 BC. 20 years before Christ, you know, 486 to 465 BC. Esther became queen and remained as a queen between 483 to 473 for 10 years. So if you turn to the book of Esther, which is almost in the middle of the book, before Job, before um, all that, somebody can tell, there is a pulpit Bible too. 574. 574, 574, the book of Esther. Just a couple of scriptures, and then I can sum it all up in a short message. Everybody got it? The book of Esther. Now in the 12th month, there is the month of Adar. On the 13th day, the time came for the king's command and his decree to be executed. The 13th day of the month of Adar. That is the last month in the Jewish calendar. You know, the Jewish calendar starts uh, with the Nisan. When we celebrate our March and April, March leading to April, 15 days before, 15 days after, either way, the Jewish calendar starts with the Nisan, the first month, which is between March and April. So the last month ought to be between January, January, the Adar is February and March, February and March, February and March. Then again, 8 hour, February, March, the New Year starts. So that is the Jewish calendar. So you have to think in a different angle. Doesn't matter. So that is the last month, according to the Jewish calendar, 8 hour, between February and March, our calendar. The 13th day, all the Jews, not only in Persia, but the rest of the world were going to be executed. That was the king's command, according. What happened here? On that day, when the enemies of the Jews had hoped to overpower them, the opposite occurred. What do you mean by opposite happened? 
instead of the Jews being destroyed, their enemies got destroyed. Their enemies were destroyed because something got mixed up and something got overpowered that whole mixed up situation. You know. That was the omnipotence of God. You know. So everything happened, the opposite occurred in that the Jews themselves overpowered those who hated them. We have always mentioned it many times, the 23rd Psalm. God prepares a table in the wilderness. If you are a child of God, if you have enemies, no matter where they are, you know, we can disagree with people, you know, we can agree with everybody, right? So people sometimes do not agree with us. Family, conflicts, you always see that. But if you are right in the sight of God, and in the, in the sight of people, even if they disagree, the Bible says, great peace have they who love the Lord. And even their enemies will be at peace with them. That's what you see. Isaiah said it. Great peace have they who love God's word. And nothing shall offend them. But if offense took place, God will turn around any situation. Even the, their enemies will be at peace with them. That is what is happening here. So what happened, Haman plotted against the Jews for a month, for a month or so. During that time, Esther, who was an unknown girl, because Queen Vasti didn't want to come to the presence of King Agasuras, he deposed her from being a queen, and a selection criteria for the most beautiful girl in the 129 regions of the world, from, e uh, from Ethiopia to India, it was a Persian Empire. The mighty Babylon was conquered. Now, Greeks were defeated. Now the Medo-Persia, Persian kingdom took over. So that is the history we, were, we are seeing. 486 to 465, when King Agasuras was in power. So a beautiful girl was sought from every part of the world that he was in total control, 127 provinces, and God had this lady prepared him. This unknown lady, Esther, taken care of by her uncle, Mordecai. <coughs> and they were living in fear of being killed, so they could not tell anybody they were Jewish. They could not say they were Jewish. I don't know whether it has happened to you, you can't reveal your identity to anybody. It was hard. It was very difficult. Why is it? Because of animosity. Animosity always face sometimes. So you are in deep trouble sometimes when you have to hide your own place where you come from. Now I can't hide my identity. I come from India. Everybody would know right away. By looking at me, right? But where I come from, they may not know until I tell them. Because I speak a couple of languages from the north and also from the south. So if I answer them in the North Indian language, they will think I'm from the north. If I answer in the south, I'm coming from the south of India. Because India has more than 15, 16 major languages and 400 plus dialects. Let me get out on that. So this was the situation to not to disclose your identity. So that was an identity crisis for the young little lady. For some unknown reason, only God knew in omniscience of God, God had prepared for her a table in the wilderness to save the entire dynasty, the entire population of the Jews from total obliteration total destruction, total annihilation. So she was selected and she has been the queen, but her uncle was always watching over her by being stationed at the king's gate every day, making inquiries, how is my cousin doing, Queen Esther. So they had communication through one of the bodyguards and others too. He couldn't go into the presence of God for a month 
the queen could not come into the presence of God, probably this so-called prime minister next in line with King Agasuras was in charge. So he had a disagreement with Haman, a Haman is the one prime minister. Now he had disagreement with Mordecai, the uncle of Queen Esther, because Mordecai would not bow down to the man. Why? He knew the Bible at that time. He knew the Lord. Thou shalt not bow unto any image in heaven or down on the earth or down below. I am your God. I am the only true God. The Lord God of Israel. The Lord God Almighty. He was behold bowed down only to him and nobody else. Because of that, he didn't want to bow down to a human being. Haman, Prime Minister, he expected that. Everybody bow down to him. Except this one person, Mordecai. So he cherished an anger within him. And he said, I have so much wealth. I have the highest position. It doesn't mean anything to me. He was telling his wife. You know, because I have this one thing, you know. This man called Monica doesn't bow down to me. So I want to get rid of it. Then the wife suggested, why don't you prepare a gallows 50, 70 feet high, 70, 75 feet high, 50 cubits. And he prepared one, highest one. So he's waiting for the right time to hang who? Mordecai. But God reversed the whole situation. God was able to turn around what the enemy had contrived or contriven plot. The plot was exposed through the ingenuity of the queen herself at the influence of Mordecai. Mordecai said, look, look, they have already sent a verdict. I just have a copy of it. Somehow Haman contrived a plot. And the plot is that all the Jews in all provinces of the entire Persian Empire, from Ethiopia to India, every Jew must be totally killed. Every woman should be killed. Every child should be killed. Can you believe this? It always happened to these Jewish people. They were enslaved for several years in Egypt. When Christ was born, baby after baby, from the baby to two years old, under fire at that time, King Herod, he sought all the babies to be disposed. They were all killed, one after the other. Why? Because he didn't want to have another king. The same hatred in Haman's heart to destroy Mordecai and everybody. So he told the, uh, the queen, Look, not only that you are, going, you are in danger, you think that we are in danger and you are a queen now. Think for yourself. That is a strategic thought he had. You are going to be killed because you are Jewish. Well, they don't know that I'm Jewish. But somehow things will pop up one day and you will be killed. I will be killed. Our whole family will be killed. See the emergency of the situation? That is why Queen Esther herself said, such a distress. And Mordecai told her, such a time like this. Who knows? God has called you for such a great purpose. What is that purpose? You can speak for the people, for me, for you. Then Esther had to use her wisdom in having a plan for the purpose of deliverance not only for her and for everybody else and she wanted to go to the king if he extends his uh, scepter then she can go and talk to him if not if he doesn't extend the scepter he would she would be killed so it was a risk reward <laughs> so she said to everybody please pray for me fast for me. So although God is not mentioned in the book, the fasting is introduced. 
fast for me for three days. I will fast, all my maidens will fast, fast and please do that. And she knew the power of prayer. So she mentioned it, fast. So after the fasting ended, she approached the king. And the king said, he loaned her. And that was a favor God gave from the king. And he was very kind to her. That's why she was selected in the first place. Now, what can I do for you, my queen? I'll give you half of my kingdom if you ask. Ask me now. I said, no, right now, all that I want from you is this. I'm going to arrange a banquet. I want you and who? Haman to attend the banquet. That was a nice strategy God gave her to have both of them come to the banquet. And they agreed. And then they had the first banquet happen. And she increased the curiosity of the king. What in the world is she going to ask? Don't you think so? Somebody tells you, I'm going to give you half of all that I have. But is your request. So he asked on this first part of the banquet, what is your request? Oh, I want you to do this. I want you to come next day for the actual banquet. Today they have only wine. Tomorrow I want you to come and Haman should be there. Meanwhile, all this happened you know. The sixth chapter we saw that you know. What did we see? He could not sleep. He could not sleep. So the king called for his advisors, scribes, to read the scrolls that had been written. So night, all that night, who caused him not to sleep that day? Insomnia. The Lord caused that sleep, deprived for him. So when the sc scroll was being read, and they found written there you know, how Mordecai brought instantaneously the danger that was awaiting for the king to be murdered, attacked, assassinated, two of his own eunuchs. You know. Right away he gave that uh, instantly that information to the queen and then the plot was discovered and the two pr people were executed. We saw that. So at the end of that chapter, we saw how the king said, what did they do to this man who saved my life? You know? The eunuch standing there said, no, nothing has been done. And he asked, nothing has been done? Yes, nothing has been done. So at that time, you see the timing, you know, such a time for God's time too, you know, appointed time. You know. When they saw in the garden, Haman walking. So he came in. And then Haman thought when the king asked him, hey, what shall be done to the man if the king is totally pleased with him and honor him? Haman thought, it, boy, it's me. That's the one, he honors me now. So who else is going to honor but me? So he wanted to ask the very best to them. Your honor, this is what you should do. You should put your robe on that man, on a nice best steed, the war horse, the best horse the emperor would ride. And parade him all over the city, the city of Shushan. That was a beautiful place. The king had his garden and all that. Then he was perplexed enough. Boy, I thought it's me. The king is telling me to do the to my enemy number one. Well, now what happened? Do it right away. Then he went out. So he had to put the robe on him, Monarchy. And then they went around on a nice parade for the entire city to watch Mordecai being paraded. They must have been startled to see, you know. The whole city was perplexed when they heard that decree read out that every Jew should be killed. So they were wondering, what is this? They were beautiful people. They are nothing but a blessing here in this Sushan. Why is this going to happen? 
Now Mordecai being a Jew, he is paraded around him. So they were all, there was great joy and rejoicing all over the place. Isn't that amazing? Only our God could do the turnaround for such a person like that. Now let's go. That's the time he went to the queen, uh, his own queen, the wife, and Haman asked that question, you know, look at this, the opposite has happened, you know. The king is delighted in Mordecai, you know, and this is what he did, you know. And he said, look, if the queen could uh, do this, knowing that Mordecai is a Jew, then this is what is going to happen, you know. If you put your face down in front of the queen, you will really going for a destruction. It is a destruction, it's a disaster waiting to happen. But you've already bowed down. So you are going to be overpowered. Now, the banquet was in preparation. That's what we saw in the seventh chapter too. Everybody was there. Then the king asked, what shall be given to you? What is your petition? The king had his wine and the banquet was in progress. And that is where it's a very important chapter. Let us read a few scriptures, just a couple of scriptures before. And that is where the king asks. That's an important question. In chapter 7, Yes. Who is he and where is he? Who would dare presume in his heart to do such a thing? That's a very important statement in the chapter. Who is he and where is he who would do such a thing like this? That's very important. Very important. Probably we'll read a couple of scriptures. On the second day, the banquet of the wine, the king again said to Esther, what is your petition? Queen Esther, it shall be granted you. And what is your request? Up to half of the kingdom I shall be, it shall be done. Then the queen answered and said, if I have found favor in your sight, O king, and if it pleases, pleases the king, let my, let my life be given, me at my petition and my people at my request. But we have been sold for, we have been sold, my people and I, to be destroyed, to be killed, and to be annihilated. Look at this, it's a very important word. Had we been sold as male and female slaves, I would have had held my tongue. In other words, if you have sold us as slaves, that would have been fine. But, to be annihilated, it's another story. See, there's such a seriousness of purpose here. It's a, such a great distress, total calamity. Had we been sold, fine. Although, you see, you have to compare one bad to the other bad. Which danger is greater? To be devoured by a lion or just work as slaves? So you have to choose one of the two dangers. So that's the way you have to look at it here. We hate slavery. No one should put anybody under slavery. But that's what Queen Esther said, and that's what happened. You know. So the king Agasuras asked, look, another thing too. I would have held my tongue, although the enemy could have compensated for the king's loss. In other words, such a loss is not a serious loss. But such a destruction for the Jews to be annihilated is great in the sense that it is great for uh, uh, Haman, but not for you. you know. It's going to be your loss too. You know. you know why? You are going to lose me. You know. I am your queen. You know. Did you get the picture? You are not only going to lose all the Jews, I am your queen. Are you going to lose me also? She was saying it in another angle. You know. Very nice angle. You know. Very effective. Very, very strategically important. You know. In negotiations, they always say that. You have to get the point across. Look at Queen. I am going to be destroyed. Not only that. My people are going to be destroyed. 
the plot that has been contrived. That is where he asked a very nice question. The king Jaisuras answered and said to the queen, Who is she and where is she who would have presumed in his heart to such a thing? Such a time like this, she has come, selected by God himself, through Jaisuras to be the queen. But now, such a danger for the entire Jewish population all over the world. And the Messiah is supposed to come in the, in the Jude, as a king of Judah, as the king of kings and the lord of lords. He has to come. If the entire Jewish people have been wiped out, Mary wouldn't have been on the scene. Joseph wouldn't have been on the scene. Christ wouldn't have been born. And the, the Abrahamic covenant, whoever blesses you shall be blessed. Whoever curses you shall be cursed. That is also God's promise to the children of Abraham, to all the Jews, you know, the chosen people. Now they are able to see indirectly the influence of God, the omnipresence of God. Even when they are now being attacked by all these missiles and so on. But there is, the Messiah is going to come and the church is raptured and we are all gone. Antichrist will be ruling the world. That's a time God will choose 144,000 Jews. They were seen on Mount Zion. They will be the evangelists preaching the gospel. And the two powerful witnesses God would raise, they would even raise the dead. All kinds of miracles. So God had everything under his plan. Even today God knows what he's doing. So the omniscience of God, the omnipresence of God and the omnipotence of God, the Jews are going to see finally before the eternity starts, before the 1000 millennial reign starts. They are going to see that. And we will be with Christ because first, for first Thessalonians 4th chapter talks about at the sound of the trumpet, the church will, go, will be gone. We will be gone. Those who are saved by the blood of Jesus, they will be gone. So the greatest event is going to happen, folks. And it's true. So this is what is happening. You know. And Esther said, the adversary, the enemy, is this wicked Haman, right here. He is right under your nose, your honor. So Haman was terrified before the king and the queen. Then what happens? The king arose in his wrath from the banquet and went to the garden. Now, look at what is happening now. Let me summarize it without reading the rest of it. The queen was in command now. Haman was terrified. He fell at the feet of the lady. Please save my life. I know the king is really angry. So my life is in danger. Then the Bible says here he fell on the couch where Esther was reclining. Then the king enters in at the exact time when this happened. What is, what is this? You are attacking my own queen in my, in my own house? As soon as he said that, one of the eunuchs covered the face of Haman, took him out, and they hanged him where Mordecai was supposed to be hanged. Very nice. Read that one. And in the eighth chapter, the king again, Esther asked the king, I want you to do me another favor. This is the favor. You will give. Esther told the king, Mordecai is my relative. Oh, bring him up here. And then Mordecai was made the prime minister in the place of Haman. See what God could do? He prepares a table in the wilderness. Our enemies, they, you, they have to come to peace with you or God is going to take care of them. You can only pray for them in our context today. So the king is once again opposed by the queen. This is my relative. The king gave Haman's house to the queen and he appointed Mordecai to take care of the house. All done. Now the queen asks, I want you to do me another favor. What is this? Look, now 
Mordecai is safe or I am safe. What about the rest of the Jewish people all over in the 127 provinces? All right, very simple. I will put another decree. All right, you can take care of it. You under Haman. I will give the signet ring. Now write whatever you want to write and reverse the plan and empower the Jews in all those 127 from provinces. That's what they did and that's what happened. That is the omnipotence of God. You see the whole thing, you know? Every plot that the Jews were plotted against by Haman reversed itself and the Jews became well empowered and the enemies of all the Jews were destroyed, including the ten sons of uh, Haman and all those who stood against them. On top of it, look at the plan of God. Many, many people who were non-Jews in Sushan, they were all converted into Judaism because God put the fear of the Jews upon them. That is why they, the, Jesus said, this is the Lord's doing and it is marvelous in your eyes. See, whenever God does something, it is marvelous. How could this be? I'm always at marvelous uh, thinking. How could God choose somebody like I am to pray over people, to lead people to Christ? Some of the most difficult people God put in front of them to witness to them. Can you believe that? I, 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 I was so astonished. At I went for prayer to pray over a man. I didn't know he was paralyzed. So I was asking the Lord for a scripture. So that I, while I was praying, the man stood up. Don't pray for me, I'm already healed. Only our God can do that. Only our God can do that. I have given you more miracle stories in the past 20 years, right? Some of you have been here, like Angela has been here more than 35 years. The first 19 years of my being a leader here, we have heard some of the stories. Sometimes I repeat them. But the most important thing is this. God is an omniscient God. He knows about you before you were even born. He selected you in your mother's womb. That's why you are here listening to the gospel. God wanted to choose you to be blessed, to be saved, to be healed, to be delivered. So that you and I can be a powerful witness for Christ. To glorify him. So this is the book of Esther. And if you will look at it. In that angle. How he was there. With Esther for the 10 years of her period as a queen. Then later on at the 20th year. According to the history. King Agasuras was assassinated. And another king took over. You know, his world history is great. Even Josephus accepts the miracle power of Christ, the Jewish historian. Our God is able to do that today. Praise the Lord. Blessed be the name. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, what a miracle working God you are. Such a sovereign creator of the universe. Such a miracle power you have, O oh God. To reverse everything that has been planned against us. Satan is the greatest enemy, O oh God. But you reversed his plan upon our lives, O oh God. You destroyed his works on the cross, O oh Lord. Yes, Lord. And, his, and you have given us the authority to destroy the works of the devil in our bodies, O oh God. We have absolute authority over Satan, O oh Lord. That's what you, you have equipped us, O oh God. In your name, we can cast out demons, O oh God. We can lay hands on the sick and they can recover in your name because we are doing it authorized by you and nobody else. Those who are watching this on the YouTube or Facebook, whatever, if you do not know Jesus, the Lord God Jesus is such a King of Kings, such a, such a Lord of Lords He is, such an indomitable power He has. He has most insurmountable power like no one has. He can save you right where you are. If you do not know your sins could be forgiven, here is good news for you. He bore all your iniquities and my iniquities, bore all our transgressions on the cross, 
That's why the blood was shed for you and for me. Just repent, Lord, I'm a sinner. And tell him, come into my heart. And thank him for taking you as his child. And if you have any disease, just put at his feet. He already took it on the cross. He bore it on his body. And the Bible tells us, all of our sorrows, he took in the form of all sicknesses. And he bore all of our griefs in the form of all diseases. That's why I have seen more than 100 miracles healing in the lives of people. You could be another one and tell me, yes, I believed it and it happened to me. You believe the word, God will heal you. You believe the word, God will save you. Because Psalm 107, 20th verse tells us, he sent his word and healed them. It is God's word that saves you, heals you, delivers you, nothing, nothing else. Because Christ backs his own word in my name. So we ask you to believe Jesus in his name. Your disease can be healed in his name. All that I can tell you is to lift up the name of Jesus. The name above all names, the mighty and unconquerable name. Now thank you for coming into your life, saving you, healing you, delivering you, and give God the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Yes, to God be the glory. Perfect song. To God be the glory. And then we could go down and have lunch. Six. 66. To God be the glory. Brody, whoever wants to start, good. Eileen, you guys are all good singers, yes.
after the benedictive. We, we could all go downstairs. There is plenty of food. Uh, you are welcome. Everybody welcome. You are both here for the first time. Have dinner with us. And uh, many of you may have brought a dish. That's fine. If, even if you didn't bring a dish, it doesn't matter. Come downstairs. We need more food. Next door, this nice food is available. I won't get it. So don't worry about food at all. All right? Uh, Angela, would you like to offer a word of prayer for the offering that is there in the basket? Whatever you can afford to give, you can give. God will bless you. If you don't have, it doesn't matter. Offer a word of prayer. All right, Angela. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. May the Lord bless you and uh, shower his blessings upon you. Be gracious unto you. May his presence and his power and his peace be upon you today and forever until we are going to be with the Lord and be in his house and live forever and ever. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.